want you to step, bump, step, bump, bump, step, bump, step, bump, bump. Five, six, seven, eight. These step, people are really bump, alive. Step, bump, bump, step, bump, step, bump, bump. These people exist. They are real. Eighteen-year-old Abdulia Sanchez expresses regret for her role in the fatal crash. You may remember the fatal crash. Three teens in a fast-moving car singing. Scariest of all, live streaming on Instagram. Fully participating, all while allegedly under the influence. You know what would be good is if you hit kicked and then you kind of did that and then a barrel turn and then ha! You know? That was, that was good. That would be. That was really know, good. You a dancer? No. No, no, no. Not a, I'm, I'm just drunk. Ah! Gotcha. Uh It may be fun to watch stupid people doing stupid things, but could they represent a role model for your life? This is your host Amanda and today we make friends with the inner critic. Yes, you've noticed. Everybody wants to get rid of their anxiety, if possible. The infamous feeling is obstructing you most of the time, relating to most of life's challenges. But you probably don't know yet, that anxiety could also be your faithful friend, and could represent a blessing in disguise for you, as a person who wants to evolve. We don't even realize how much we owe to anxiety. The first stage of the creative process involves freeing oneself from the disabling influence of the inner critic, the mysterious character who blocks your creativity. At this time, a latent inner critic is more valuable than a hyperactive one. Nevertheless, after the first stage of the creative process, after one will have crystallized a creative idea, the inner critic comes into play to give feedback. Is it one's idea somewhat vulnerable, or unrealistic? Does it call for improvement? Unfortunately, for some, that moment of self-doubt simply doesn't occur. Therefore, there are two types of inner critic pathologies. Depending on the level of anxiety, too much or too little, generated by the inner critic. A hyperactive inner critic. In such a case, our creativity and stamina are endangered. A too active inner critic, disrupts our activity through its negative suggestions regarding ourselves on the one hand, and the world, on the other. A hyperactive inner critic is a catastrophe itself, rendering us very lost in a very dangerous world, an illusion that takes the mask of undeniable truth. A dormant inner critic. One might argue that without the inner critic there's freedom and creativity, personal power, growth, and evolution. The truth of the matter is that without inner critic's contribution, the creativity is plain useless and the creative process is doomed to fail. If a hyperactive inner critic is a catastrophe, a dormant one is just a narcotic paralysis. The self-satisfaction that one develops in the absence of the inner critic is not only repulsive and sterile but also extremely dangerous. Do you miss your slightly anxious times? Well, maybe you should. Here are a few ways of crippling the inner critic which result in a poor ability to learn from mistakes and grow. Downward Comparison Comparing oneself to people who are on a lower level of performance breeds a state of comfort, relaxation, and never-ending fun. One may take joy in their accomplishments, no matter how worthless they may be. For instance, in the United Kingdom, if anything went slightly wrong, knowing that it's still better than in Germany it's enough. 
if there's at least one person under your level of performance, is worth partying for the rest of your days. Rationalization In a psychopath's mindset there's an obvious tendency to dehumanize their victims, in other words, they used to denigrate and emphasize the bad aspects of a person's behavior, in order to victimize them carelessly. Thus, the psychopath becomes a vigilante who enacts justice, while their victims become just a shameful embodiment of pettiness. Define the source. On the same note, if outside voices are raised to challenge one's ways and draw attention to less than perfect aspects of their personality, one may doubt the credibility of those voices so that their arguments fade and become invalid, at least in one's perception. Those who attack me, well, they're just being mean, a racist, a misogynist or, why not, a psycho. Making excuses Through this defense mechanism, even if one admits their poor performance and failure, they avoid taking responsibility using an excellent excuse, which helps one stand oneself and, unfortunately, helps them maintain themselves in a state of ignorance and passivity, for instance. One doesn't have to get a job because one doesn't have an education because one's parents didn't care enough about that. It may be fun to watch stupid people doing stupid things, but could they represent a role model for your life? Seems like nowadays, the so-called roasting has become the universal language of successful entertainment. But essentially, Roasting means downward comparisons, dehumanizing the victim, defying the source and making excuses, which are the exact behaviors that keep our inner critic asleep. In case we were looking for a perfect way to take a break from personal responsibility and growing efforts, we obviously found it. They say the difference between men and women is that women find difficult to see their own beauty, while men see themselves as the epitome of perfection. Beyond the generalization, and disregarding the actual genders, women represent here a symbol of the people whose inner critic is excessively active, while men symbolize the people that are not well served by their inner critic, and whose inner critic has been regrettably laid off. We hope this video presentation was an opportunity to evaluate your own inner critic's activity and will help you access your resources making friends with, and making use of your inner critic. Thank you for your time and we'll see you in the next one. Until then, don't forget to be the best version of yourselves. This! I remember this! This is an adventure!